this is Trev, aka Headphones Hi-Fi Reviews, upstairs because today we're going to be doing in-ear monitors. First of all, I have three sets of people to thank. Micah, thank you very much for laying on this tour and for persevering with it. Mike is also known as Glass Monkey on Headfine, and I, as you know, I'm also a member of that if you've been following my videos. Phil Wall of Audio Concierge. The Go Between Man. And finally, our Chinese friends, Lark Studios, this week have laid on the LS4 Universal in Monitor. And we're going to be talking all about that. So first things first, we're going to be doing an unboxing. So here we go. The Lark Studio LS4 Universal in Monitor. Lark Studio, a Chinese company. I know very little about them. They've got a website that will be coming up on your screen shortly, no doubt. Uh, oh, first of all, this is just a cardboard outer, nothing on it at all, just to protect the cardboard inner, which is quite understated but looks nice nonetheless. And here we have it. The Lark Studio LS4 Universal in -ear Monitor. And let's go about unpacking it. And first of all, we'll show you the cable. It's a twisted braid type. Nice memory wire. I don't really like the connections at the ends, but they're extremely well built and they look like they're going to last. It's just, they just look a bit long barreled and plasticky and sort of cheap, but they're pretty standard. I mean, when you compare it to the finish of the shells, I think you'll agree. I mean, there are many different finishes available. This is just one. And um, they are really, really well made. You can just see a glimpse of the drivers. And behind the shell, I've got comply tips on these, but there are other tips. And then we've got the Velcro strap at the end. So we'll just get that to one side and wrap that around at the bottom. So as you can see, that's attached, but it will come off with a bit of effort, no doubt. It doesn't get in the way, is the bottom line. So the cable, nicely finished cable, a befitting of the price tag on these. Which I believe is about £362 in British money. Terminations look pretty good on them. A lovely finish to the jack. And you have your chin strap there. I mean, it's a cheap plastic affair, but it does the job, and many of them don't have that, so. I'm quite a fan of that. And 
and we have the three and a half mil connector nicely finished the flight adapter well the last time I went on a long haul flight yes they had the jacks for it but I found that I could put my earphones in either jack and I got stereo so I don't know whether that's really becoming a bit redundant these days so we've got um, a soft velour sort of carry bag there Lux Studio can just be seen on it and then a more robust maybe um, for traveling on holiday LS box and um, they have very kindly given us a couple of Lux Studio straps maybe if you're called Mojo or your digital audio player to interface with your smartphones and then just a few tips that they've given us um, the complies were the only thing that worked decently in my ears um, I don't know whose ears are going to appreciate these things the double flange blues but well certainly didn't suit my ears at all it just took all the bass pretty much out of it and made them sound really harsh the Lark Studios and they're not particularly harsh oh we've got a straight back in you go so I was looking for some instructions, something like that, but as you can see, I mean, that's the end, that's as far as it goes, all the rest is like false bottom, just sort of like glued on. So that is basically what you get, um, but the finish on these you can customise to an awful lot of different finishes so if you don't like this finish then there are lots of other beautiful finishes available so we'll put it back in the box and then I'll show you what they look like in the ears as they're obviously quite a different um, fitting to many of the ears in ears out on the market at the moment So we're taking a look at the shape of the Lark Studio LS4 and as you can see it's a break away from many of the boring shapes and great big blocky fits of some other designs that we have. First of all you'll see that we're smooth. There are no pieces sticking out of the Lark Studios and you can see that they're used to making customs for their clients because many of these little grooves and divots are what is used in the custom in-ear industry to ensure perfect fit inside the earlobe because that, in my opinion, is as important as getting the nozzle, the nozzle into the ear canal and through into the second bend. Getting a solid fit into the ear is, in my opinion, more important than getting a great big ear tip hurting your ear canal so semi-universals have got a potential big advantage in the market but let's see if it fits my problematic ear 
So I'm now going to twist the comply foam tip and I'm then going to put it round my ear and push it into my ear canal and see how flush a fit I can get. So here it goes. So twisting the foam tip, getting it all packed down because then the comply foam will expand into the ear canal and fill out the gap. And it should give you a decent amount of isolation and of course a decent amount of base response. Well, there we go. We're going to try the correct ear now. And we're going to push down the comply foam, which will ensure a nice tight seal because it will expand inside and take up all the excess space in the ear canal, which should give a nice bit of isolation and a nice bit of extra base warmth to the sound signature. So I've wrapped it round the ear and I'm now pushing it in to get it as flush as I can. And I can all, already hear my inner voice. So as you can see there's not much gap, there's a little bit of gap up the top of my ear and down towards the bottom of the earlobe and the entry into the ear canal. Obviously we've got a gap here, but if I just pull this out slightly, you can I don't know if you can see, but it's curved inwards. So down towards the entrance to the ear canal, it's blocked off by nice smooth casing. Next part, we've done the unboxing, we're now going to talk about the LS4 and what its competition is, particularly in terms of what I've got. So let's wrap this up and put it in its velour bag while we're talking to you a little bit about the LS4. So it's four dynamic drivers I believe in these. They do a 10 driver version of it as well. I've got an awful lot of in-ear monitors and I set about a monumental task over the last fortnight to give you an idea as to what sort of sound this might be producing and how it compared to other similar priced and actually much lower and much higher priced in your monitors. So let's put it in its bag Tie the thing up. And there's your nice neat little package and we'll put that to one side and we'll start looking at the competition. So bear in mind the Lark Studio LS4 will cost you £362 I believe in this country. This is a pair of not semi-custom but full custom in-ear monitors by arguably the creators of the custom in-ear monitor which is ACS Advanced Custom Solutions who have offices in America as well as the United Kingdom and possibly elsewhere too so let's unwrap this and give you a look at this one. Okay, so as you can see the cable is a totally different type of cable, but both cables are being done to reduce the amount of microphonics, i.e. the amount of noise that the cable makes. 
uh, and to make them as light as thin as possible reduces the possibility of any cable noise, particularly when you're exercising or running. So just to give you an idea of these, these are five driver versions. They're considerably more expensive and considerably, obviously, more hassle and time consuming to um, arrange to get your ear impressions taken and then for them to be made takes a reasonable amount of time but arguably worth it in the end. So let's put these away. show you our next which is the AKG K3003i I stands for iPhone compatible so here's the tasteful wallet that these come in hopefully you can see me unwrapping all this and how it all works so this is a cord type cable. Again, there's very little microphonics with this one. This is a hybrid driver designed earphone. And one has almost unwrapped it now. So that gives you an idea of the difference between what I would call a quirky sort of universal shape that is not designed particularly with, a, you know, a, a, a sort of a, a semi-custom fit in mind at all. Um, but they're reasonably small enough um, shells that they fit inside the ear reasonably well enough but you know the potential there is to get an awful lot of um, wind noise and sound coming in when you're walking around the countryside so we'll put that to one side and now we're going to look at another thing again so this is a universal in-ear design I've been involved with Phil one all of these before, so this is the old Bravo Earrib 2. Have a look at these. Let's put that huge, great uh, carrying case away. It is massive, isn't it? But that's what it came with. So the O Bravo Earrib 2. Obviously, this is my own very tasteful purple elastic band and this is the Android and iPhone compatible cable so as you can make calls and pause your music if you're using your smartphone and as you can see the fit on these was such a nightmare for me that I decided to customize them I found that my left ear is so problematic that I basically welded, plastic welded onto the custom ear shells I made. Um, a Sennheiser i800 tip um, to improve the resolution on the left ear. So let's put that to one side. What else have we got for you? Also part of the competition. A full custom JH Audio 12 driver Layla. But the person that bought it didn't really like it and sold it on eBay. And as it's a full custom, the resale value on them is considerably less and you can pick up a bargain and 
when I say bargain, this is probably fifty pounds more than the Lark Studios LS4 retail for. Um, I don't know if you can see, but to actually get a decent response and a decent fit, um, the person I bought it off of has cut some silicon ear tips off and put them round. And without them on, uh, they just they sound awful to me. But with them on, yeah, they're approaching a customs performance, I would say. And with the 12 driver JH audio sound as well. So let's have a look at the cable and the fit and such like that JH audio have got. So I think these were used by um, a stage music musician because we've got some left and right uh, mic attachments there. So you can actually get some feeling of when you're singing into your ears. And we've got a JH Audio a proprietary connection there. So only JH Audio cables or custom cables fitted for JH Audio products are going to fit this. But they're pretty tough. And you know, the twisted braid cable like Lark Studio is really not that much difference. And that would have retailed at about £1,200. So let's put them to one side. Next up, we have the Universal Hi Fi Man RE2000 Silvers. These are considerably more than the like Studios, these retail for £799. Totally different type of fit into the ear, as you can see. A couple of sharp edges. But all in all, they're reasonably comfort fit. I'm not going to let out any secrets yet as to which I preferred and which were better or worse than the Lux Studio. Um, the cable is, it looks fairly cheap. Um, it doesn't have a tremendous amount of microphonics with it. Um, I think that's more to do with the fitting in here, which takes a lot of the microphonics out of the, uh, the RE2000s, in my opinion. So that's quite a thick connection going in there before it gets anywhere near the drivers. So, let's those out of the way. Next, I tried these. And what are these called again? The Cardas Universal Inion Monitors. I think they're called the Perfect Ratio or Golden Ratio. Yeah, their first attempt at their in-ear monitors. And these are very slightly less, I believe, than the LS4s. Great big bulky cable. It's quite sort of inflexible. Sorry if this is blurring the image a bit, people. Um, yeah, great big barrels. They do look quite nice, but the obviously the double flange um, tips, silicon tips, um, put one off a bit. But my ears are, are that small that I need the double flanges in there to lock them into position. Um, lots of microphonics on this cable. Um, it's quite inflexible. I mean, obviously, these aren't really suitable for doing any exercise with. Um, slightly less retail than the 
Palace Falls anyway. Um, you know, the, the finish on them is, is reasonably good, reasonably strong. So that's that. Not many more to go now. The Sennheiser i800 Universal, single driver. With specialized tips. A horrendous fit. So again, I've customized these. Considerably more expensive new than the LS4s but on the second hand market provided you know what you're going for you can pick these up relatively cheaply and cheaper than a new LS4 would be so the um, the build quality of these is, is reasonably good um, the cables aren't detachable but this part is detachable and so you can put microphone stuff on and make them into Bluetooth if you're willing to spend even more money than they cost in the first place and a reasonably well terminated and angled jack so that's the Sennheiser IE800 not the S model the original IE800, which in my opinion is much better, but that's just my ears and my opinion. And I think this is our last one. So, this is a custom cable, and an almost defunct company now called Trinity Audio made the Trinity Master 6 which I believe is a three driver with lots of different tips in it so this cable um, is custom made from a guy in the States what was his name again I think it's written here Petrick so Petrick made me this, Brandon Petrick. Um, I don't believe, I might be wrong, that he manufactures uh, or makes uh, cables anymore, but he made me this one. And um, again, that's gone into the Trinity Audio Master 6, just before they pretty much went out of business. Certainly I haven't heard much from them in a long time now. So, the competition and the Lark Studio LS4 itself. We're going to talk about sound quality, sound characteristics now, and how it stacks up against all the competition I've shown you. And I listened to an awful lot more in ear monitors before um, I came to narrowing these down to, I don't know whether we've got a top 8 or top 10 here in front of us. So the LS4s, the first thing that I noticed about these compared to many of my in ear monitors is how clear and how alive the mid-range sounded. So the vocals are very, very easy to follow. With a poor fit into the ear, and the micro adjustments not being made then there is some glare to the upper mids and lower treble the sound is very powerful um, there is some bass um, it is a linear bass it doesn't go down very very low but you can feel a bass present but how does it compare to other models here? Let's have a look at some that didn't quite get to where the LS4 is in terms of where I feel the sound quality lies. 
So, if we look at the Master 6, Trinity will do Master 6 was very close to it. Uh, in terms of the base response, the Master 6 was superior. In terms of the sound stage, the Master 6 lagged slightly behind. It wasn't as wide and not quite as believable. And some of the micro effects uh, in the music mix were not as easy to pick up on the Master 6. Um, the overall feel of the Master 6 was maybe they weren't quite as harsh sounding on some of the recordings I have uh, compared to the LS4. But vocals were slightly swamped uh, within the rest of the mix with the Master 6. But a good effort nonetheless. Well done Trinity. What shall we show you next? Right, so what were these called again? The Cardas, a golden ratio, universal in ear monitor. I'll put it up on the screen anyway. I can't quite remember the the make of it. I mean, these aren't being produced anymore, but you can obviously pick them up on the second hand market, and there are a few knocking around in audio stores left to sell. But these were base monsters. They easily beat the LS4 on bass. The bass response on these things is incredible. However, I think possibly at the expense of the bass, the vocals tend to get a bit lost in the mix and the sound in the mids is very slightly dry on these. But in the upper mids, there's some really quirky stuff going on, which is really fun to listen to with the Cardass. They are really are an excellent in-ear monitor. Um, but the microphonics on them, I mean, walking even would be off-putting, I think. And they don't isolate extremely well. But for listening at home, they are amazing, fantastic. Slightly less um, than the LS4. And certainly if you pick them up on the second-hand market, you'll probably save a couple of hundred pounds compared to what the LS4 costs new at the moment. So let's go on to the K3003i. I didn't want to like the fit of these, but actually the fit of these is pretty good. Um, I haven't really taken them out uh, for a run because they just seem so special and I'm worried about this cord getting all sweaty and eventually just rotting away. Um, and I don't know how much protection from extreme sweat these would have. So the fit is nowhere near as good as the LS4. There is a little bit more microphonics with these than with the LS4. I'd say overall the sound of these is probably better than the LS4, but then you have to remember that these were retailing at over a thousand pounds, and I think they still are new now. You can pick them up on the second hand market for around about the price of the LS4 or slightly more. And because of how special they are, um, you should be able to pick up a, a, a very good condition uh, version of the. AKG K1003. The difference in the sound signature of these is they are uh, more linear. They don't have quite maybe as much bass as the LS4s, which haven't got a huge amount of bass anyway. Uh, they are not as harsh on any tracks uh, in the mids and trebles. They have a lovely um, uh, accuracy, a live sound to them, uh, very similar to what the LS4 has in the, in the mids, treble and vocals, and the vocals are very easy to follow. Um, I'd say these technically are a better, a quite a bit better sounding earphone than the LS4s. Coming on to the Eerie 2As, um, these are quite polarising. Um, I don't think I've done a particularly great job on the air shells at the moment, but um, 
I can go into that on other videos, but these can be reformed uh, indefinitely, millions of times if necessary, to achieve the perfect fit. So I'm not unduly worried about how it looks at the moment. The main thing is how they sound, and how do they sound? Well, the upper bass on these is fantastic, and they are a planar magnetic tweeter. And it just sounds amazing. There is no glare to the treble, and there's lots of detail with these, and a great big sound stage. Um, I can use them on my run, believe it or not, um, because they are a custom fit. I've kept an awful lot of the wind noise out of them. Um, obviously the sweat is going to eventually not do very much uh, good to the cable, which is a cord affair, but it doesn't have that much microphonics now. Now I've actually customised them. Um, so I'd say that, um, again, these are more expensive uh, new than the LS4s, They're quite a bit more expensive new, and how many you'd pick up on the second-hand market of these, I don't know, um, but I'd say that um, they win both in the bass and, and in the treble area and the mids um, compared to the LS4. So where do we go next? Uh, we'll have a look at my customs. So the characteristics of the ACS Encore Studio. Uh, there are five drivers. Uh, they are a very, very tight fit into my ears because, of course, they're customs. Um, they're not uncomfortable. They don't have any microphonics. They've got considerably more bass and are quite more rolled back in the um, upper uh, section in the treble than the LS4s. Um, they have a better sound quality um, technically than the LS4s. They're very lifelike vocal, which you can follow. And um, the treble is rolled back, but not to hugely reduce the amount of micro details you can pick up. The sound stage on them, because they are rolled back, is not quite as wide, but still quite realistic uh, um, as the LS4. So that's them. And we'll come on to the RE2000, the hi fi Man RE2000. These have a lovely laid back smooth feel to the sound on them. There isn't much microphonics in the ear for extended periods of time. Um, they can pinch slightly, but they are actually extremely light. They don't look light, but they are extremely light. The, um, shells, the driver shells, to put into the ear, and um, they don't need complies to produce decent amounts of bass, the bass goes lower, the sound is somehow, to describe it, cleaner and more detailed than the LS4s, which just sound louder, even at the lower volumes, um, than the hi-fi man which never actually sort of sound loud they really just sound like hi-fi headphones but in the form of in-ear monitors um, I'd have liked the cable to have been perhaps a little bit more luxurious looking for the price they do cost considerably more than the LS4 but once you've listened to them I'm quietly confident that you'd agree with me that you can see why there is a price differential between the two, despite the fact that these look relatively cheap compared to, to the LS4s, believe you me, what they've put inside them and how they've tuned them is not cheap at all. 
So I think we've got one more to look at. Uh, no, a couple more yet to look at. I beg your pardon. We've got the IE 800s to talk to you about somewhere. Aha! Right, so the IE 800s. Characteristic, nice low bass, extremely wide sound stage. And a really silky, shimmery treble. It's difficult to describe it in a way that people think that he's talking nonsense. But look, you've got these ports then. We'll talk about the ports. They're obviously making them extremely open sounding. And my wife, the cameraman, um, could follow really every word of um, some of the songs that I was listening to this afternoon without any problem at all. I mean, these are one of my favourite uh, universal in-ear monitors. It's just the fit was awful. Now I've got the fit right. I mean, they are a sheer delight to listen to. And I would encourage anybody who's not heard them to have a listen to these and see whether this is the type of sound signature they like. It will take some getting used to because it sounds quite unnatural compared to a lot of other in-ear monitors. But... Um, it's just because the micro details are picked up with such efficiency by these. And this again is a single driver design. Um, and the Cardas is a single driver design as well. However, the JH Audio is certainly not a single driver design. Come on, AKG, hand them over. Right, so the, the JH Audio Roxans. Uh, or I think a 12 driver design and it's difficult to describe the sound of these compared to the rest um, I suppose the way to describe them is maybe they're like mini speaker monitors they just seem very very accurate so Nothing particularly stands out on them other than the fact that they sound like you're listening to a live concert. In terms of the sound stage, it just seems so realistic in the bass, treble and mid response. And they just sound extremely powerful. I'm sure once I give myself the time and I start experimenting with the actual nozzles of these because these have been done for somebody else's ears I might get even better res uh, response um, I think many would prefer the sound of the LS4s to these um, simply because these just sound so energetic in every department um, so they do take some getting used to and uh, I think maybe you either love or you hate the JH audio sound just to put it into perspective, the LS4 is quite a capable beast. These, dear folks, are the also runs. The ones that didn't quite match the quality of the LS4s. With some very close, very notable also runs. Venture Electronics Balanced in here or Bonus in here BIE. I believe that's $20 and that was really nice and I preferred the base on those than I did the base on the LS4s and I also had no glare in any tracks at all on the BIEs whereas I had some glare on certain tracks with the LS4s but the mids just of the LS4s had more quality than the BIEs. Lots of other stuff here, um, some, so that's the Monks, I expect a lot of you have heard of them, again I've customised them, they just fall out my ears all the time, but they sound really great, I think they're $10, it's just ridiculously cheap.
lots of other stuff I could show you here. Here we got the Rap Studio. There we go. Yeah, bass monsters, crazy bass on them. And lots of other stuff, but they didn't quite come up to the quality of the LS4s. So let's bring you back to the LS4s. And we'll conclude about them. Not everybody will agree with my opinion that the LS4s don't quite match some of the other in-ear monitors that I've shown you. My wife said that these won hands down to the tracks that she was listening with compared to the Hi-Fi Man RE2000 Silvers. The RE2000 Silvers are £799, these are 362 I hope I keep getting this price right. But um, in her opinion, she preferred the fuller sound of the LS4s compared to what she described as a slightly thinner sound. Of course, I would say detailed, separated, blah, 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 of the RE2000 Silvers. So these are no slouch, they are a beautiful fit in the ears. I wish that I would have been able to have done some exercising with them and taken them on a few runs to see how they coped with that. I believe that they would have been absolutely wonderful for running um, because of their fit being so good and so comfortable. Arguably even more comfortable than my ACS full customs for my own ears. So I think um, my first look at Lark Studios earphones, I'm extremely impressed with them. I have other in-ear monitors which I believe are technically better in terms of how I hear them. But if you're in the market for a decent pair of in-ear monitors that you can exercise with as well as listen to seriously that need no amping at all, then the Lark Studio 4s are definitely worth looking at.